people who have considered ending it or what made you keep going. One of my friends beat me to it. That was a really tough funeral to go to. Extra bad part is he had the same first name as me. It's a real strange feeling when you were seriously considering dying and actually planning things out. And less than a month later you're at a funeral where everyone talks about what a tragedy it is that your name is gone. I took my niece out to spend my final day. When I dropped her home she said that was the most awesome day ever and you are the best auntie in the entire world. That line saved me 4 years. In 2018 I was in a very bad state of mind and thought about ending my life many times. Honestly what saved me was thinking about my dad. His mother had just passed away and was dealing with a lot. I could think about him now burying his only son. Standing at my grandparents grave I decided it was time to get help. It was the best choice I ever made. 3 plus years later I'm on meds and have a support group. My best friend. My cat. He's the only friend I've had my entire life. Ages 12 to 18 I was isolated from my peers because I was being not treated well by my mother and stepfather. My stepfather used to hurt my cat as well and there wasn't a thing we could do to protect ourselves but hold each other at night. Locked inside my bedroom when everything seems to be too much all I have to do is lay my head on my best companion and listen to him purr through his chest. We have shared the same pillow for the past 13 years. He has slept by my side every night since the moment he came home. Every moment where all I could think about was just ending it all. He was there for every heartbreak, every betrayal, every disappointment. He was there. I owe him my life. Every bit of who I am is for him. I would take a leisurely stroll through hell for him. 10 times over, he spent years taking care of me, and now I've reached a point in my life where I can see a future for us and want to be the best version of myself. For us, it's me and him vs the world, and I will love him ruthlessly until the end of time. Used to concealed, carry at work, had a panic attack one day during the darkest year of my life, and almost shot myself in the bathroom. It wasn't necessarily that I wanted to die, it was just that in that moment I wanted the pain to end. Wasn't my family or friends or the child that was being kept from me that stopped me. It was the idea of a cow or karate grown close to opening the door and seeing my exploded head all over the wall. Slid the gun across the floor and sat there crying for a minute. Then I pulled myself together and got back to work. Cause screw you this is America. A pigeon. No joke I was 19 years old standing on the edge from a railway a train was coming. And that moment I didn't think really I only wanted to end it. I didn't cry I wasn't scared I only wished to have peace. And in this moment a pigeon flew right in my sight literally only a few inches away from face. Pigeon are my favorite animals I believed as a kid every time I would see a pigeon everything would be alright. I also have a pigeon to two since I was 17. This 3 seconds the bird saved my life. In this moment I knew so deep that I would make it through this obstacles, and I did. Every time when the dark thoughts are coming back, I remember this moment, how relived I was, after I missed the train, because a bird startled me. I was around 19 in a bad workplace with mobbing and assaulted, very bad family story. But after this accident I quit the job and few years later I was strong enough to cut my family off. Now I'm 23 happy in a place I would never thought I would make it. So if you see a pigeon on your days, please remember this story they're beautiful animals. I became angry at myself for being angry at life. I just had enough of my self pity. I have always tried to become happy, but since that didn't work I instead try to not be miserable. I take things one at the time and try not to worry too much. But most important for me probably was letting go. Letting go of the past and of things which will never be. Focusing on what I have and what I can have. I had a little dog at the time. Little guy would generally sleep in his own bed. But he always seemed to know when the depression was at its worst. The only time he ever wanted to sleep with me was when the fog was at its heaviest. His little head would pop up at the edge of the bed. He would boof at me. I'd scoop him up and head curl against the small of my back and we'd just depression sleep. He needed me. I needed him. I still struggle. But he got me through the worst slash most lonely times. He passed a few years ago. I met my spouse. Life got better. I still think about that little dog all the time. Little guy saved my life. 
person who attempted here. I wish I could transfer my experience to suicidal people. I know that in that very moment. I was done I had no hope. I don't think I wanted to die. But I had reached the end of my rope as far as living. And knew that regardless of anything. I could not go on living the way I did. I was so desperate and sad. Looking back. I can't imagine how anyone could ever be so sad. And it breaks my heart that anyone ever has been. Or ever will be. I don't remember a lot of what happened afterwards. I used two methods to attempt. And without being graphic. I tried one. Realized it wouldn't work. And went for the other. I've looked for my medical records. To see what even went on in the air. But I don't have them. As soon as I was cognizant. I came to in a psych ward. And lost my sh. I was angry. Bitter. And said anything I could to get out. They moved me from the main populated psych ward to one called Seaside. Which was for people slightly more mentally ill. But unable to function in the main population. Or have roommates. I'm pretty sure that. As soon as I sobered up. The realization of what I'd done hit me. And I was mortified. I cried almost constantly. I told a therapy dog. That he was doing a great job. And I was sorry he couldn't make me feel better. The only thing I can say. That most closely translates. Is that suicide is not what you think it is. It just isn't. I was in there for about 5 days. And realized that I was the only person with an address. Job. Family etc. I started working as hard as I could to understand how I had gotten there. And how to get better. I learned a lot of disheartening things about our mental health system. The patients were seen as burdens and the doctors were stretched so thin that you might see them for 10 minutes a day maximum that is, if they got to you. On top of that, your doctors made all of the decisions, like whether or not to push for the courts to commit you. This made interpersonal relationships with doctors important because there was a lot of doctor-patient behavior I saw that could absolutely be called retaliatory. I saw people's release dates get messed around and subsequent terrifying tantrums that resulted in another month on their time. Behavioral techs and nurses are legitimate angels and were the only ones who seemed to see the patients as humans. The patients themselves were all trying their best with what they had. Sometimes someone would come in who was supposed to go to jail, but threatened suicide etc and wound up in the hospital instead they were different, and probably the only patients that seemed outwardly malicious. That stay, the realization of what my life had become, and the fact that I still had some semblance of structure in my outside life, made me work harder than I ever have in my life to get better. It's been 3 plus years, and I'm still working. I have no question become the best version of myself I've ever been. And I'm so grateful to be alive every day and that isn't an exaggeration. I love life so much. Even the dull days are magical. If you are where I was, I so hope you get better without putting it all on the line. I can say with some confidence that you may not want to live. But you absolutely don't want to die. Fight for your life. There are shades of it you've never even imagined. Hope this helped anyone. I can't stress this enough. I was waiting for the train to take to the local bridge. Even debated just letting the train do it, but didn't want to inconvenience everyone. Platform was pretty busy. The nearby elevator opened, and there was a collapsed elderly man inside who was slumped with his head in the elevator door. Dozens of people and nobody did anything. I'm agoraphobic. The idea of having to interact with people at all gives me nightmares and panic attacks. I wanted to ignore it and just get on with my plan. I'm a terrible person anyway. Nobody did anything. Just ignored it. Then the door started to close. His head would be in the way at the end. He would have been fine. The elevator doors are designed so they would just detect it and remain open. My train also arrived. Nobody reacted. I panicked and stopped the elevator and then tried to see if he was okay. Completely unresponsive. His eyes were open and he was breathing but just not doing anything. Not sure if he was even aware of anything. I called 911 and hit the emergency button in the elevator. That way someone else could come take care of it at least. Another person came by to help as I was calling and then just left. I had to talk to the operator and likely sounded half insane using words that are outdated and not part of normal speech. Like I forgot the word officer and kept saying constable. I dunno. I went into over detail of the situation. Very descriptive of the man's current state. Even said stuff like I don't know if he has any allergies which was never even asked. I was now stuck in this situation 
and couldn't leave. The stupid elevator door was still trying to close every 10 seconds, so I just stood there with this unconscious man between my legs, one hand holding my phone, the other holding the elevator door open. People started watching, not helping, just watching and some took pictures. Some transit officials arrived, and one waited at the station in transfer the ambulance and the other came to check on the man. I still couldn't leave, because I had the operator on the line, and was told to stay till the ambulance arrived, and the elevator still kept trying to close. Ambulance arrives and four paramedics come up, and one immediately just starts yelling and swearing at the people watching and filming telling them off. He scared them off, and I felt very intimidated as well, and like I didn't belong. As the other paramedics tended to the guy, the one who yelled walked up, and put a hand on my shoulder, and was very nice. I think he could tell my emotional state. He kept assuming I knew this random unconscious man, and was worried. I told them I had no clue. He went to talk with someone on his walkie. The others tended to the guy. The elevator door still wanted to close and nobody had the keys to turn it off. So I was stuck holding this door. Anyway, they eventually got into the ambulance and expected me to join them and go with him. And I apologized. Told them I didn't know him and was just a bystander. I asked if it was okay to leave. And they were very grateful for what I did and kept thanking me. And internally I was just a complete mess and felt terrible. I didn't want any part of this and was kicking myself for intervening and just want to go home and go to bed at like 2 p.m. on a Saturday in the summer. So I did and cried myself to sleep. If I was dead I wouldn't have had to deal with that and never would have to again. I don't even know what happened to the guy. I just wanted to not have to feel and not have to deal with life. Nobody else even did anything. All these normal people who are not afraid of leaving their bedroom or talking to a cashier or being seen by strangers, they just would have let it happen. And I, the terrible person that I am, did. I hated myself for it, but I did a good thing. You're not supposed to feel that way for helping someone. Everything about it was just wrong. I may not want to be here, but other people like that man probably do. I woke up the next day, forced myself to go to a walk-in clinic. They had me do a couple written tests. I thought my answers were mild. Turns out I got the highest score on depression and on anxiety, and spent a year on and off different meds until something worked. I'm still depressed, but the anxiety is mostly gone. I still don't want to really be alive, and think about suicide a lot. Some days are worse. I don't feel the urgency anymore. I can talk, and leave the house. Got a job again and stuff. I took in a cat, that needed help. I may not want to be alive, but at least I can look after this cat. It has a simple life. But it seems happy. I look after some close people now too. That's enough for now.